So, uh, resurrection, as we get near Christ the King in two weeks, the, the focus is about Christ returning in glory and resurrection and life. And it's called the Paschal Mystery, through death to life, that death and resurrection go together like two sides of a coin. You don't separate them. We die in Christ, we rise in Christ, the, the Paschal Mystery. And in, in the Hebrew Revelation, in the Jewish Scriptures, there is a very slow development of resurrection. Uh, in fact, in, in, the, uh, in the early days, the Jewish people thought that you continued after death in your children. So it was so important to have children. And notice, notice it sounds strange to us, but if your brother died uh, without having a child, then you were to marry his wife and have a child for your brother, not for yourself but for your brother, so your brother would continue living, see? And so the, the, the old, the old uh, Jewish thought was that you continued on after death in your children or in the books you wrote. Folks, I'm in real trouble. <laughs> I haven't written a book, and I don't have any kids. I better at least issue a pamphlet or something. So that was the, that was the, old, that was the old thinking. And, and so you see the Sadducees, who didn't believe in resurrection, uh, they told this silly story. It's silly, uh, but they, they weren't serious. They wanted to just trip Jesus up. And uh, then, of course, he says, you know, even Moses said the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they're alive. He didn't say they were dead. He's the God, the God of the living. But it developed uh, 200 years before the birth of Jesus, uh, uh, young Caleb, our elector, read from the book of Maccabees. And in that book, the Jewish scriptures begin to talk about resurrection. And these seven brothers were being put to death for their Jewish faith. And what kept them strong was their belief in resurrection and life. Resurrection, folks, is not resuscitation, coming back to the way we are now. It is transformation, all right? So Jesus died on the cross, and Jesus was transformed into the risen Christ. For the only Jesus we have is the transformed, risen Christ. The same person, but now transformed into the risen Christ. So in Maccabees, the seven brothers were given strength and faith because they believed in uh, in the resurrection. Now, um, I, I got to tell you that um, uh, it, it is so important to to to, to me for, for us. It, it, it makes all the difference in the world if you believe that we continue to live forever in God. That we live, we share now in resurrection and life, but it continues for all eternity. We. We're alive in the risen Christ. We share in his resurrection. But I think we have to be very humble as far as fully understanding. We're entering into mystery here. I like the parable. Maybe you've heard it uh, of, of, of uh, the three stages of human life, the three stages. So the first stage is within your mother's womb, which is usually about nine months. And uh, from what I told, we're very happy there. We're very content. We're warm. We're usually well fed, swimming around. And uh, it, this is a parable now. If you could talk to the baby about nine months into the pregnancy and say, Well, I got news for you. You got to leave the womb. The baby would say, I don't want to, I want to stay right here. I'm very content. I'm very happy. And then we would try to explain to the baby, well, you know, once you come out of the womb, uh, you're going to meet your mother, and you're going to meet your father, and you're going to meet some friends, and your brothers and sisters. Instead of swimming, you're going to crawl and then walk, 
and pretty soon you'll be running and dancing and you're going to be able to talk and sing and instead of being fed through the umbilical cord you're going to be able to eat some delicious food and drink and it's going to be wonderful you're going to see colors that little baby wouldn't have a clue of what we're talking about not a clue and, and then the day comes and you know you, you, you okay it's time to come out uh, and, and so uh, uh, and, and they, now they say they say that there's a struggle there's a struggle in birth you know going down the birth canal and uh, so there, there's a certain struggle you have to go through the struggle of leaving the womb and then here we are in this we're in the second stage right now folks right now see singing and dancing and meeting people and seeing colors it's wonderful there's a third stage, and that's the resurrection and life, sharing life with the risen Christ. And as the baby in the womb cannot comprehend this stage, we can't understand what's coming. We just can't understand. It's beyond us. And scripture simply says kindly, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it even entered into our minds what God has in store for those who love him. It's beyond our wildest dreams. The best is yet to come. But don't expect to understand it at this second stage. We can't. But we can only look forward with great hope and anticipation. Now, happily, and you know this, uh, happily, science and faith are coming together uh, here in the 20th and 21st centuries. And there's all kinds of books. You can get these at, at any bookstore about of people who are describing as best they can uh, what the third stage is like. It's people who died and then come back. They call it near-death experience. This is by a, a cardiovascular transplant doctor, uh, uh, Chadler, uh, and, and he's living in Florida now, and he wrote this book, Touching Heaven. He died in a car accident and then he came back and he describes he describes uh, what the third stage is like 90 minutes in heaven has anybody read that 90 minutes in heaven that's another uh, uh, dr elizabeth kubler ross did all kinds of uh, imagining life after death okay all of these there's many many more but science and and faith are really coming together on this and although we cannot fully uh describe what it's like it's beyond what we can even imagine uh, it does change people's lives when they come back and the number one thing is you're never afraid to die you're never you're not afraid of death at all because it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful uh, they experience God they experience pure love and the, the other thing is um, you have this deep sense that everything's okay God's going to raise it up. Just everything's going to be all right. You're at peace. And then uh, you're, you're not materialistic. You know, I, I could give a big homily as we get ready for Christmas. Now, don't be, don't be into this commercial Christmas and don't be materialistic. Uh, all you've got to do is die and come back. And you'll be fine. You, you won't be material. You, you, you're not really. You, you know, material things, you can take it or leave it. But they're not a big item in, anymore. And it's all about, they're all listed here. You want forgiveness, reconciliation. You want time with family and friends. You want time with God. It's all good stuff. But we, we know the effects of touching the third stage. We come back and we're ready to go home to God whenever God wants. What I want to throw out to you now is what I do myself. I think it's important to have practices things that you do, uh, to ac exercises, to help us prepare, to help us be aware of resurrection and life in heaven. Heaven, okay? Uh, when I had my hip out in January, they gave me these exercises. And I thought they were ridiculous. You know, just move your foot like this. I'm not kidding. Move your foot ten times like that. What good is that going to do? So I had to move my foot ten times, and then, now just lift your knee, you know, do this ten times. Well, they give these little exercises, 
And, well, look, now, see, if you do these exercises, they do make a difference. So here, I want to throw these exercises out to you. This is what I do. In the breviary, which is the office or the official prayer of the church, for night prayer, for night prayer, they quote Simeon. Remember Simeon in the temple, Simeon and Anna? And Simeon held the baby. He held the Messiah, the Christ child. He had this little baby in his arms. And Simeon said this, and he was an old man, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light for the nations, the glory of your people Israel. As long as he saw the Messiah, as long as he held the baby, he was ready to die. It was all set. Isn't that beautiful? And, and so you say that prayer before you go to bed. Sleeping is symbolic of spiritual dying. Sleeping, you go into the unconscious. If you say that prayer, then get into bed. I mean, you, you, this is being recorded, I've got to be careful. Uh, but but <laughs> the, Now, breathing, and this comes right out of the Jewish tradition. Does anybody know what God's name is in Hebrew? Yahweh. Yahweh. This is what we think it is. Breathing. The breath of God. The breath of God. You ever hear someone snoring? No. So if you try that, try going to sleep with Yahweh, the breath of God in you. Or, or you can put Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. If the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, and the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, then that spirit will raise you to life too. See? See, the reason I'm focusing on the body, don't just pray with your head. When we do the creed, we believe in the resurrection of the body. We're going to be fully human. We're not going to be some spirit floating around. We're going to be body, soul, and spirit. The full thing is important. So breathe Yahweh. Breathe Holy Spirit. Breathe Whatever word works for you, grace or, or Jesus, what, whatever it is. All right. So that's when you're going to bed, you're entering into the death, okay? And then when you get up in the morning, when you get up in the morning, get out of bed and get down on your knees, see, like this. Thank God for another day. And then you get up. Resurrection. That's resurrection. And you get up. And when you, notice, you notice when we have the scriptures, we're sitting, then the gospel. We stand for the risen Christ. It's the story. See, so resurrection, you stand up. It's a sign of resurrection and life. Then, finally, take your cross and put it on. Put it on. And this is resurrection and life. Through death to life. Put it on and begin the day. See if those exercises don't help, okay? See if it makes a big difference. If you believe in resurrection and life, your life is going to change right now. Things are going to be different, really. One final thing. I was with Dick O'Shaughnessy. We were visiting a communion call. And this guy, he had this big smile on. I went, you know, what are you so happy about? And he said, today I have forgiven someone who hurt me 40 years ago. That's resurrection, folks. He let it go. 40 years ago. He's been carrying it for 40 years. He let it go. That's re See, the resurrection begins now, goes right on into uh, eternity. So do your exercises. Do your exercises. Okay. So let's pray the creed. And uh, yeah, let's pray the creed and, and really focus now on the resurrection of the body. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll get, we got to sit down again. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Bryce, Bryce Edwards. Is she here? Bryce? 
Yeah, Bryce is our candidate for RCIA, getting ready for baptism and confirmation and Eucharist. All right, you're fully risen, I can tell. My dear friends, this community of St. Catherine now sends you forth, Bryce, to reflect more deeply on the Word of God that we've shared with you this morning. Be assured of our support and our prayers and our love for you, and we look forward to the day you'll join us at the Eucharistic table. All right, thank you. Hey, Linda, if you know of anybody who'd like to join the church, we'd love to welcome you. Thank you, Bryce. Thank you, Linda.